Hey, welcome back. I want to just show you real quick a um, pretty cool app that I um, not really got a chance much to use, but it's called the Copeland Mobile app. You just go to your app, Copeland Mobile. What I'll do is just scan the barcode like such. And there we go. Barcode unrecognized. Oh my. Let's try this one. Okay, so there you go. I think that's it. Okay, so I've got the ZP83K. Dang, that's it there. So hit it. So now, pick your refrigerant type, 410A. Okay, the frequency is gonna be 60 hertz. And what this does is it tells you pretty much everything about this compressor um, oil charge or recharge let's see capacity 83,000 BTUs scroll we see the electrical data summary Voltage is a 460 volt, three phase, uh, frequency 60, lock rotor amps. This run load amps 13.6. MCC amps, I'm not sure. You've got your winding resistance, which is really cool. And performance. So, rated performance. Condensing temperature. Operating temp 45 degrees. See our dynamic performance. Should have 15 degrees of cell cooling. I really like this as well. It's got a diagnostic section as well. All right, so setting up. Check our compressor amps. Now we can see our amp draw here. Put this on AC. Pressures, temperatures here. Suction line, liquid line. Let's see if this matches up any of these specs. It'll take about five minutes. All right, so I finally started back up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my Amp draw, so compressor amps is 10.8. Got um, about 60 hertz average, 11 amps. Let's just let it run. We'll go ahead and uh, start recording. I was gonna graph out, show my frequency in my amp draw. The green is going to be the amp, the current. Go ahead and do a measure click as well. But um, essentially, yeah, it's pretty much um, everything on this app. Like I said, I like it. Once again, check your currents. Supposed to be eleven point eight. I go to my current here, we got 11.5, this is what I'm drawing, I've got my amp Bluetooth um, Testo meter, it's in there, it's about 11.8, it should be about 12, 
I guess right on the money. 60 hertz. Really cool to be able to see if you're getting the proper temperatures, volts, amps, pressures that you should be getting from the manufacturer. So I pulled this up off of an older system. Um, it wasn't able to capture it with this system because it's a three phase, but this is an older single phase system. And you can see you can actually pull up, if you pull up your uh, your um, electrical, you can actually find your capacitor size. So if you've got a single phase that uses a PSC motor, you can actually, I don't know if you've ever come across any of those problematic capacitors that have been completely worn and um, they don't actually have the proper specifications on them. This here will show you um, your capacitor size here. So that's a pretty cool little little feature there. Also, the run load amps, if you look here, I always, when I first started, I always got confused because I thought this was actually what the compressor should be drawing when running, but this is actually the max amp draw that your breaker or contactor should be able to take, uh, should be able to handle consistently. So you have your run load amps. So these both here are just showing you one is used for your contactor and one is um, going to be for your breaker. If you actually look in your performance, that's where you're going to actually get your rated amps. You see? So if you're looking at a, uh, oh yeah, so if you look here, uh, it's a four ton at 40, basically 48,000 BTUs, you can see that it's not current drawing anywhere near those um, your rated load amps. You're seeing 12.1 amps here at uh, 48,000 BTUs and only 16 at the 40,000 BTUs. And like I said, you got your sub cooling that it should be spec at. Another thing you want to look out for if you want to use this app, you don't want to be um, trying to use this evaporator temperature, uh, sub cooling, return gas temperature, unless you're at AHRI um, specs, which is uh, strangely enough, they run their um, testing at 80 degrees indoor uh, dry bulb with a 55, I believe, percent. Might even be 50% um, relative humidity, 65 wet bulb, 65 degree wet bulb. And then they do outdoor temperature at um, 95 degrees. So that's definitely going to affect your uh, suction line temperature. You imagine 80 degrees rather than 75, that's a five degree difference. So you're probably looking at a 60 degrees return gas temperature for normal conditions running at 75, you know, maybe 78 degree temperatures indoors. So that's something to keep in mind. These are just the specs. But they also have this dynamic section here, which is pretty good, which um, allows you to enter in the specs manually. And they'll do a little uh, capacity calculation for you. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of raw. They probably, it's about time to update the app, I'm sure. But um, this, I like it. Like I said, it definitely gives you a lot of um, information um, about the compressor. Really cool for doing... Um, maintenances and different things like that another thing that i like about it here is this model number this here model number um identifier so to show you what each uh, numeric value represents z is for the scroll r is for your um, application uh the 40k that's probably kind of obvious that would be your capacity p is your motor type split capacitor motor protection is f then the voltage is going to be the voltage type would be um, the V in the model number. So that's just, you know, some extra information if you ever wanted to know what the actual model number re uh, represented. Another thing, too, I wish they actually had the specs for the insulation test, what that needs to be um, for the scroll type compressor. But they do have your winding resistance. I'm guessing this is from um, common to each terminal so from start winding to common should be 1.38 ohms and then from what run to common will be 0.57 but uh yeah i guess that could be helpful i'm not sure this will show you your general voltage that's your lock rotor amps mechanical will give you all your specifications you know suction line size discharge line size all the you know general things mineral oil yeah like i said it's a really cool app so yeah um 
it's worth looking into, checking out. And like I'm saying, you can, a lot of times it's um more so just for learning's sake than uh, actual troubleshooting or diagnosing. Uh, it's more powerful as an educational type of piece. You know, you can cross-reference this while doing your diagnostics and different things like that. So, other than that, it's just a quick little video on uh, the Copeland uh, mobile app. Like I say, I mostly use it just for cross-referencing, making sure um, I've got proper amp draw and things like that. So, other than that, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other cool apps like this uh, for educational purposes because I'm always looking to try to find different apps that will give me... Uh, just a little bit more edge in the field. So other than that, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye now.